or the Wrigley Field or the Fenway Park of the PGA Tour and there's an intimacy here where you can actually watch golf. It's so much more spectator friendly than a lot of places and we travel and go to different events and as a lot of people do and there's something special about here where you feel like you're part of it instead of being on the outside looking in. You feel like you're right in the middle of it here and it's, it's awesome. Hi everybody, welcome to Coastal with Catherine. I'm so excited for the show. Can, can you recognize this iconic clubhouse? Well, I'm in Harbor Town, and guess what's happening in a couple of weeks? We have the Heritage Golf Tournament, and we're so excited. So in today's show, we're not only we're gonna learn about what's going on with the tournament, because actually we're opening up for 2022, which is exciting, but we're gonna talk about the play of the course. They've done some changes in their tee boxes for the, the players. They always like to be challenged. They always want something new. So we're gonna to talk to Steve Wilmot, who is the tournament director for the golf tournament. And also we are gonna meet John Farrell, who is the director of sports and director of golf here at the Lynx. And they are such a wealth of knowledge that we're gonna be excited. I'm excited because I wanna see what's going on for 2022, so let's go find them. Well, I'm delighted to introduce you to Steve Wimma, who is the tournament director and also the president of the Heritage Foundation. And look, everybody, look where we are. We have the beautiful harbor behind us, the Cowboggy Sound. This it's is not, a great place to be, Steve. You are. This is your office. Uh, it's not too bad, is it? But, it is um, not too bad. Yeah, you know, this is the most iconic, one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, holes in golf, especially with the lighthouse behind us and all but the Calaboe Sound and the ha Harbor Town Marina. So it's it's pretty special. We have, you know what I love about it? It's also a lot of people bring their boats up, and they just. They just moor their boats out here, anchor them, and they spend time enjoying the tournament. Yeah, and actually it's one of those things that we look at every year too is the tides because uh, we certainly like it when it's high tide so the boats can come in a little bit more and it's prettier than low tide, but it's still uh, a beautiful setting for a PGA Tour. Number one, we're delighted to have people back. The audience is going to be here. The crowds are going to be here. Uh, the field is coming back. So tell us. Well, it's... Um, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you can tell I'm excited as well. I mean, tis the season, but it, you know, our, our team, our, our our trustees, our volunteers, it's a year-round effort. It's 53 weeks out of the year effort, let alone you talking with John Farrell as well today. There's uh, the conditions, it just doesn't happen overnight, but uh, this is the, the execution time, the last six weeks or so, the build-out. Uh, um, getting everything handled from an operations side or the logistics side with the staff with ticketing and uh, marketing and, and signage and those kind of things. So it's, it's really all the volunteers are all energized, our spectators, our sponsors. So it's, it's going to be an exciting few weeks leading up to the tournament. We're excited to be being back. Oh, absolutely. The Hilton Head, the vibe is here. We're starting to feel the vibe again, the pulse again. You know, we're hearing it on the radio that it's coming back. But let's talk about your volunteers because it's a significant amount of people that help. Well, there's there's roughly 1,400 that we that work under our or work with us. They, that doesn't include some of the volunteers that help in the concession areas to help our concession and so forth, but the volunteers, if, if we had to pay a volunteer a dollar an hour for their time, we'd give nothing to charity, and it's because of the this great community and the leadership of our volunteers and all our volunteers that we're able to uh, impact this community in a very significant way every year. The Heritage Foundation is very endearing to our community, and Steve and your team are all just super to, to work with and always to interview. You know, I always feel um, that you're well, giving back to the community. Well, and please know, I, I have an opportunity to travel a lot of these tournaments, and uh, we have something very special and unique here. And when we talk community, we mean community. Uh, we really it know. is whether it's reaching out to the mayor, and yes is the answer. What's the question? Whether it's working with uh, 
uh, the sheriff's department working with Columbia with our uh, political leaders as well. It's like, what can we do to uh, assist us here? So I, I feel very fortunate each and every day uh, to be a part of something as special as this. And uh, it's a team effort. There's no doubt about it. It's a community effort. We appreciate all that you do and WHHI does as well. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it too. You know, and one thing I would want on a side note, because we are talking about the tournament though, Hilton Head Island, even though it's been ranked the number one island in the country, the community behind here is amazing. This is one of the hidden gems that people don't know. We know about our golf, we know our tennis, but what Steve is just talking about is, that's one thing I started the show is because I wanted to find out about the hidden gem behind the scenes. And today, let's look over here, Gustavo, Steve. So this is gonna be the grandstand for the 18th hole. Yes, actually this is our, our double decker, double -decker. Uh, here, but we do have our, our title sponsors out here, RBC, as well as our presenting sponsor being Coca-Cola, or excuse me, Boeing, but Coca-Cola is out here as well. But uh, um, And then we have some bleachers and some other things down. But the, this build out is happening. This is one of the last things that goes up because uh, Sea Pines has some weddings leading up to it. So we work around some of those things too. So there's a lot of moving parts, but it's, it's again, it's working together, which makes it so special. And uh, I've said it before, there's no I in team and I'm, I'm we're fortunate to have so many great teammates. So let's go find John. Great. Well, as I stand in front of this iconic lighthouse, and you also can hear a little bit of noise, the machinery and the beeping behind us, because guess what's happening? The Heritage is arriving in one month's time, and I would like to introduce you to John Farrell, who is the Director of Sports here at Harbortown Links. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, as, as I did a little check on you, a little bit of bio, and let's walk over here uh -oh. for a second. And you know, you've been here for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. correct? You've, and you've been a golf professional for all those years, and it seems yep. like your your career has grown and grown and grown, correct? Yeah, I've been very fortunate. I've been with Sea Pines since the late 80s, and uh, so it's been over 30 years, and my intent is to have it be another 30 years. <laughs> it's a good place, isn't it? <laughs> it it's sure not is. so bad. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah. So you've seen, also you've been part of the Heritage for what, nearly 30 years as mm -hmm. well. Uh -huh. So today we are going to talk about the course. They have done some modifications of the course. Yeah. And so since you are the Director of Golf and Director of Sports, he has full knowledge about what's going on. And, and I, I'm curious to know um, what sort of made this year different to have you decide okay. to do some modifications? Well, there's a lot of things different, unique to 2022. Um, right behind us is the new quarter deck that's going to open the first week of April, which is a magnificent new restaurant, full service, unbelievably beautiful structure. Um, and it's the first time we've had a full field event as far as spectators are concerned since 2019. So we've been in a kind of a COVA induced coma since 2019. And this year we're, we're open back up to a full field of spectators and we're gonna have an international TV audience and we've got the golf course in perfect condition. And we've made some modifications to the golf course just to add a little bit of yardage here and there while, while at the same time protecting with, with a lot of enthusiasm, the integrity of the design and the, and the shot value. So it's really an exciting year. We couldn't be, well, I can't remember since I've been here, a more exciting time just because there's some pent up excitement after the layoff from not having spectators. I think so. I, I, it's got to be, you know, and, and also I just want to ask you, so we have no restrictions for COVID or anything. We're at business as usual. Come and enjoy, walk around, you know, eat, drink and be merry yeah. and enjoy the golf. We're still being careful, you know, we're being, we're being mindful of so pe people coming from other parts of the world mm -hmm. have a high sensitivity to it. So we're using sneeze guards and we're still disinfecting our golf carts more frequently than ever before. And we're doing a lot of little things that I think are appreciated by our guests knowing that there's still a little bit of a COVID hangover. Yeah, well, exactly. So two prongs. So when one is the tournament that's coming up and obviously this gentleman is, you know, you're at the helm of this project, <laughs> this tournament. So, and for other people who like to come here to the links and to Harbor Town, yeah. uh, what could you recommend for them as for an, for an experience? Is there a time, place, or how would they? Sure. Do? So, we're one of the few places on tour where the public can play, and we're a semi-private resort facility. We've got a membership who enjoys the off all, all of our golf courses, and um, we, as far as when to come, you know, we're. We were just as enthusiastic and just as aggressive with our pursuit of, with our preparations for the weeks around and the weeks all throughout the year than, as we are for Heritage. Heritage is a very important week to us, there's no denying that. Right. But the other 51 weeks, people come with certain expectations and we want to exceed those at every chance we get. We want them to have a private club golf experience 
or a private club resort experience at a resort operation. And that's, we're committed to that from top to bottom. That's our ownership and our leadership and our president, uh, Steve Birdwell, and all of our executive committee is committed to really giving a premier experience from the gate to your eventual departure. And you know, one other thing I want to share with that, because just to come and play, you know, not in tournaments time, it's just a beautiful course. I mean, look at this, Gustavo, look at our beautiful water here. But it's the hospitality, it's the friendly hospitality, and you really feel like you're gonna have a wonderful experience. John is gonna take us, and we're gonna grab Steve, and we're gonna go and see some of the modifications they've done for the course, so let's stay with us. Well, as we talked about, we, a lot of the things in this course has been modified because of just the players, what the demands, the needs are. So, John, we're out and about. We have two gentlemen here. We're going to talk about what's going on with the new play for the season. This is tee box number two. Mm -hmm. And what, what did you guys do? Well, for 53 years, we've played from right here at 506 yards. And uh, Steve and I, as we always do at the end of a tournament, we have post-tournament analysis where we discuss things we're glad we did and things where we have what we'll call them opportunities for improvement. And um, this past year we, we decided that we were going to try and add some yardage to a couple different spots that would not negatively but rather enhance the integrity of the design and the shot values as they were intended to be by our, our golf course architect Pete Dye. We're very careful about not doing anything that would jeopardize what Pete's original intentions were for the golf course. And But number two, we, after analyzing the shot link data, we discovered that we could add some yardage here and it would actually restore it to what it was originally intended to be. So that's what we accomplished here. That's really interesting. I mean, when you keep, when you, what was his vision? What was, is there some sort of a description further you can tell us about that? Yeah, that's a great question. So he was very, you know, unfortunately he, he has since passed away, but before he passed, he made it very clear to us that to not add yardages to the shorter holes. They're intended to be short, and their green complexes are designed for a, sh a high-pitched, shorter iron to come into them, and the ones that are long were designed to have longer clubs come into them. So we've stayed loyal to that. We heard him, and we're not going to, we're gonna remain committed to that. That was his intent. So, that being said, hole two, 500 yards for a par five for the tour players today. It's nothing. It's with the ball and the club and the athlete. Is when Steve like and I first, three? yeah, it's like, it's very, very gettable. And the data shows that. So we, we paid attention to the data. So we've added 45 yards to hole number two, which is going to play now more like what Pete originally had intended in 1969. So it's really not as much of a, it's more of a restoration than it is a modification. And it's really cool. I love that idea. And, and, one, thing, and one thing that John's talking about there with regards to shot length, Shot link is all the data, the information that our volunteers gather for the tour that you see on whether it's pjtour.com or on television. And we get together afterwards with John Wright, the superintendent, and we look at uh, you know the distances and how it affects. So when we talk shot link, we look and analyze that every year, and it helps us from uh, some things around the green from our build outside from the tournament is to what we can and can't do as well. You know, I always think there's a lot of math when it comes in golf. You know, and I always wonder, and I, and I we didn't ask you this off camera, but there's got to be well, obviously statistics because you do go back and analyze it but you know when they start creating the particular design of the course and where they put the sand traps where they put the you know, all the things that can go wrong do they sort of say well 80 percent of the shots are here so therefore we're going to put some sort of um, uh, sand trap or something that's going to make it a little bit more challenging at that is, there any, is that play no, no only no? because only not in this case it's a good question however because the integrity of the design and the shot values were established in Pete's head in 1969 with his wife Alice's help and with Jack Nicholas's help because Jack Nicholas was this is the first golf course he participated in the design of so all those shot values that you speak to were were already addressed a long time ago so mm -hmm. we're not changing anything that would change what their original intent was and that to tell you the truth what Steve and I are well aware of is that's at the tour players insistence they have such a love affair with this golf tournament because they love the fact that we're not 7,600 yards with trickery. We're a, we're a classic, traditional uh, golf course that they want. They're, they are saying, don't change. We're, they're begging us, really, don't change the integrity of the golf course. It's a true shot maker's golf course. And you look over your shoulder, you're here right side, 
number one, you sit here, your left left center, possibly your right center too. It's it's a true shot maker. Anybody can play here. You, know, you look at our list of past champions; is the best of the best. Yeah. You know, it's when you say this, a true shot maker, because there are some clubs I just don't like. You know, and so it's you, you got to you know. It teaches you have to know how to use your clubs appropriately, right? Yeah, you have to. You'll hit every club in your bag here. <laughs> well, let's keep going. Let's see what else is going on. Well, everybody, I'm so delighted. I have Bob Stevens <laughs> here, who is beloved on our Hilton Head Island. He's also an anchor on WHHI, and what a great find because there's a lot to you know. We love you because your your sports history, yeah. your experience, and your professionalism. But now he has a different role today, and you're wearing white. And there's a reason for that, and it's because you are a caddy. Yes, I am. So that means he has to know a lot about the, the how to play this course, right? You know right. the nooks and crannies. Right. So a lot of people, you know, really don't know what a caddy does. What is their mm -hmm. job? Well, at Harbor Town, caddy does. There, there's two different kinds of caddies. Some will carry a bag for one player, just like you see on the tour, mm -hmm. and they'll be with them the whole day. The other is a four caddy, which is what I do most of, which is I work with a whole foursome. They're in their carts, they do their thing, uh, driving the carts around, but because we're cart path only, they need a little help to keep things moving. And so I do yardages, read putts, rake bunkers, do kind of all the other things to kind of keep everybody moving. So you, you are actually talking about boots on the ground here. You know this course <laughs> in, in, intimately. So sure. what are some of the challenges here? Tell us, you know, is the putting, you know, we, you know any kind of championship play putting is always challenging. Sure. But what makes this, what's indigenous to this place? For this? Well, th this place, the greens are very subtle. They're, they're the breaks on the greens, there's not a lot of hills obviously, flat course, but uh, they're a little subtle, little of this, little of that kind of thing that uh, only being around it a whole lot of times really uh, leads you through it. So hopefully I can help the players play better, score better, uh, because I'm telling them this is actually going to break a little right to left instead of left to right, which is what you're looking at, and uh, things like that. Mm, and what other, can you give some tips to somebody who's, who's looking to play this course for the first time? We watch out for your veins, <laughs> besides everything else, but yes. what do you think? The smartest thing is, is just take it easy and, and just keep it down the middle. Keep it out of the trees. <laughs> we have a whole lot of trees. We actually lost a quarter of our trees on the golf course in Hurricane Matthew. Okay. And it feels like we didn't lose anything. So it, that shows you how many trees we did have. And now we have a, a fewer but they're still pretty close by, and uh, if you can stay out of the trees, stay in the fairway, that's what makes this course so much fun and playable, is, is if you can do that, you can score here. There you go, helpful tips from Bob Stevens, the <laughs> caddy, AKA Ackerman. Thank you, Bob, for helping me out today. My pleasure. Well, we cannot be at the tournament and be at Harbor Town Golf Links without stopping by and seeing the peak die. And John, you're going to share with us a little bit of the history because there is. So let's go into the little museum. It's very sweet, so when you do visit, be sure to stop in. So, John, you were telling us a little bit about Pete's his vision for the golf course, but as we look here, you can see they did a nice job curating his world yeah. in front of us. <laughs> so Pete felt very strongly that his notoriety um, was in part to his success here at Harbor Town Golf Link. So when it became time for this type of recognition for his body of work to be done, he asked that we be the host site of it, which we were flattered by. He could have, he's got a great number of golf courses around the world of very big notoriety, but he wanted it to be here because he recognized what a significant role Harbor Town Golf Links had in his career development. I can understand. I mean, as we look at the bio, the, the wall of this biography, you know, and Pete and Alice and how they started way back in 59. And then to my understanding, they created this golf course in 69. Yes, yeah, 68. And it opened in, in November of 69. Oh, really? I think I just triggered this guy. But we let's, did. Let's just go over this way. <laughs> and in here, we, you'll get a clear understanding about what it takes. You know, one thing in this show I wanted to talk about what it takes to build a golf course and what's the vision. And as you can see here, the shared for love of the game, John, we're talking about. Well, I appreciate your using that word builder. You're going to trigger that one. Oh. So Pete's didn't fancy himself just as a golf course architect. He was a builder of golf courses. 
and he would be down into the ground, on the ground, moving dirt with his, and earth with his hands. And he was a hands-on golf course builder as much as he was an architect. And he used to prefer the word builder to architect. And so we captured that here. And as you know, we've got a, um, an area that this, this gets to see. This, was, this is very typical of Pete. And I had the pleasure of working and being alongside him when he was out on making changes to some of our golf courses. And he did the Heron Point Golf Course, which is now a signature Pete Dye golf course. And he's out on the, in, in there digging in, getting dirty. He's, he's all about digging in. Is it now? Well, it, it, but that's the authenticity of it. It's a passion. I mean, I just, there's people that just feel it, taste it, yeah. breathe it, and he's just one of those people, you know, yeah, that he, gentleman. And you can see, but I'd like to show you over here. Here's the big, uh, the course. And this will give you a good perspective of what, how the course is laid out, the big mural here. And it's, it's been like this for all the years. Nothing has changed. And this, we did find out that the tee boxes have been extended. A few tee, we've added a little bit of length here and there, but the integrity of the design is intact. Yeah. What you see here is the design tree, and those are the number, the different architects that came, that were, tutel, were that came under his tutelage. That um, it's his kind of his. That's probably his crown jewel right there. Is the number of people have gone on to do great things in the field of Look golf at these course names. design. We have Jack Nicklaus. We have Scott Poole. We have Bobby Reed. I mean, anybody else here that we? His all... his sons Perry and Pete. Uh huh. Um, I mean Ben Crenshaw, Jack Nicklaus. Was this the first course Jack participated in the design of? I mean that's quite a, note or, a, note, a point of notice. And then you got Tom Doak, who's doing some things. Gil Hance is now probably as a well-known name in, in golf course design and building as anyone. So it's a wonderful thing. If you, Greg Norman, you know, if, if a Hall of Famer. So if you if you worked with Pete Dye and you paid close attention, you learned an awful lot. Did you now? Uh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. My pleasure. This is a place you got to come visit. Absolutely. All right, you know me, Splash of Fashion. You can go into a golf shop without recognizing the plaid. This is the, the plaid that is special to the Heritage Golf Tournament and they are wonderful. It's a signature piece. I have seen people wear these in the airports and everywhere else. But gals, you always want a cute skirt. Look at that. Matching set. And I think we are the Heritage Classic. Well, John, as we talked about, this is also, this event is more than just four days. I mean, look what's behind us. You can see the construction over here. And we're actually we're walking up onto the 17th tee box. And there has also been a modification here because, tell us why. Well, we added some yardage here. Um, in 1969, the tournament was played in November and it played at over 200 yards. So this past year, we looked at it, Steve and Jonathan Wright and the, our friends from Ponte Vedra. We looked at all the data again and we saw we had an opportunity to add some yardage here without affecting the, the integrity of the, the shot. So it's really cool. We, we've added some yardages and we've still been able to accommodate the spectator viewing areas and the corporate sky boxes and things of that nature. So it's a real simple change that our, our ownerships are committed to and it kind of takes all the entities to buy into this type of pro progress. So we're excited about this. You know, what I like about this tee box, it's really intimate. I mean, you're right there and there, and then the audience and the, the crowd is there. And actually, this is a general spectator area. We have some hosp private hospitality, but the one thing is, it was kind of an opportunity that was presented to us in, in 2020 when we had no spectators. Uh, so we had no build out, and the tour decided, because there's always been a skybox and a bleacher over in this area, that they decided this is the original tee box area, so they wanted to, to use this. So then they used it in 21 when we had limited capacity, and now it's a part of our plan moving forward. So we're working around the uh, how the golf course was set up to be played. You know, that's kind of interesting because COVID taught us a lot of different things. And some, you know, for years you kind of do the same old, same old. But with not having all the the, the clutter around or whatever the build out, like you say, it gives you another perspective. You said you used the word intimate, and it is an intimate setting. We're the or the Wrigley Field or the Fenway Park of the PGA Tour, and there's an intimacy here where you can actually watch golf. It's so much more spectator friendly than a lot of places, and we travel and go to different events, and as a lot of people do, and 
there's something special about here where you feel like you're part of it instead of being on the outside looking in. You feel like you're right in the middle of it here, yeah. and it's it's yeah. awesome. I, this is why we love the heritage. It's all those reasons. So let me just talk about this tee box one more time. So here's your here's your tee, and then you're going to be hitting the ball, right? How long is this hole? It's 200 me. yards. 200 the big, yards. The big okay, thing so here is like, the wind. So that's like what a nine iron or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> so there, it's it's all relative to the winds, and you'll see the caddies. A great number of the caddies will walk up to the edge of the water there because from back there you're shielded by some of these trees and some of the homes, so they can't feel the wind as, as significantly as they can from up there. So the caddies often go up there and they and they look at behind the green, and they look at the flags on top of the sky boxes on the right to see which direction that wind's going, because that impacts their shot selection and their aiming lines. And John, one other thing we should mention is we will be using the, the left side of the tee box too during sure. the week, and it will be uh, depending on wind, depending on the setup, but the PGA Tour dictates uh, that for us. Sure. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And the tour players like variety. They've made that very clear in your different meetings you're on. You yeah. chair a number of these committees, but they, the tour players like variety. They like us to see move things around so they get some different shot values. I love that. Well, anything else we got to talk about about the, the course before we continue a little bit more? It's a team effort here, and it's not just about throwing some grass seed and uh, throwing some water on it. It is truly, uh, John is the best in the business, but he also has an incredible team, too. And uh, I don't want to speak for your John, but he's our John, too. <laughs> he, John Wright. But Couldn't have said it better. We have, we're very fortunate. Our superintendent and his team and our superintendent at the Plantation Club, who's his partner, Brooks and Tell and John Wright, are the finest in the industry. Absolutely. To me, I think there's an art and science to this. You no know, question. Not, it's, it's not just no. these lawnmowers, but no. it's the grass you choose. I mean, I, like down in the south, I call it sticky grass. I don't, what do you, what's the word for this? It's a, it's Bermuda. A, it's, it's called the grass <laughs> that doesn't let your ball out. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you for joining us. And thank you. We will a treat. Talk, yeah. And this is Coastal with Catherine. So I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. And do me a favor, we would love to know what you think about it. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share. We would be grateful for that. So until next time, thanks for joining me. This is Coastal with Catherine.